What's going on everyone? I hope everybody's having a wonderful day today. Hope you had a wonderful day yesterday and the day before and the day before before that. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> hey y'all, just want to come today to tell you guys Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you and he is coming back. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4 and that is that Jesus Christ died for his sins was buried on the third day, rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. He's, he rose from death. He is resurrected. We serve a risen Christ. Okay? All other gods are dead. All other religious leaders are dead. Not one of them can claim resurrection. Not one. But Jesus resurrected on the third day. For our justification. And right now he is at the right hand of the father. Making intercessions for us. And he is coming back very, very soon. To retrieve us from this earth. Before judgment begins. All you must do is believe in the death, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that his shed blood was sufficient enough. To pay for all your sins. Past, present and future. All of it. That's right. All of it. You wonder why I'm on Matthew 26, huh? The Lost Supper instituted. Well, I'm glad you asked. I just want to show you guys something. This is Jesus' own word. You know, I like to go back, you know, because people can argue all day with Paul, even though he is the one that Jesus gave charge to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. But for argument's sake, since you want to hear it from the word of Jesus himself, let's go. Matthew 26, we begin from 26 to 29. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. Here's the kicker, y'all. For this is my blood of the new testament or the new covenant which is shed for many for what the remission of sins wait a minute for forgiveness of sins not sin sins jesus shed his blood once for the remission of all sins all of it he did not die on that cross and shed his precious blood for a partial forgiveness. No. It is a full pardon. Full pardon. Past, present, and future. Well, how can he do that? Because he is God and he can. That's why. Do you have any more questions? I hope not. So all these things that people jump, you know, trying to throw scriptures around, trying to put people in bondage to the point where you think you have something to do with your salvation. Well, I have a news flash for you because you don't. Last time I checked, Jesus didn't say, hmm, for this is my blood and your blood. Oh, no, his blood. He shed it. He said, which is shed for many. Oh, wait a minute. D did you shed your blood too? No. Oh, I didn't think so. That's right. Jesus shed his blood alone on that cross. You weren't there. You weren't there cheering him on. Go, Jesus. No. You weren't even thinking about being born yet. Okay? But he did it for you anyway. 2,000 years ago. That is the future. Today. Okay? So for y'all that think that your sin that are forgiven is only until you sin again. I mean, you, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, okay? You are pretty much saying that God is incapable of saving anyone. How can he give you a free gift and then demand something in return for that free gift? Is either the gift is free or it is not? If, if there's an exchange in return for the free gift, then it's no longer a free gift. Do you understand that, people? Please, I need you all to be set free from the foolishness. Anyone that is preaching something other than what Jesus has told us, anything that puts people back in bondage or having you start doubting or in fear, run from that person. 
This is truth. Run from that person. I say this out of love because many people are pretty much on edge right now, okay? You see what's going on around us, right? Yes, that means Jesus is coming, people. The rapture is imminent. When I say it's imminent, that's exactly that. The rapture does not need for something to happen specifically right now for it to happen. No. It is a separate event. The rapture is a mystery. And I'm sick and tired of people, you know, trying to change it to make it, oh, well, you know, you know, it has to happen on this date or that. No, it does not. It is a mystery for a reason, okay? There's no rapture date set anywhere. It doesn't follow an earthly calendar, no Jewish calendar. It is exactly a mystery, which is only God's timing. And when he have decided, son, go get your bride. Boom, rapture. And which I believe to be soon because I know the tribulation is about to take place. Why? Because I heard it in a dream and my son had a dream also where I was telling him 2020 is destruction in a dream. And he doesn't understand why I would say that in his dream. I said, well, hey, that kind of confirmed what I just, you know, you know, dreamed, you know, several weeks before hearing about the tribulations about to start. I heard the voice like literally so clear. I don't know who said it, but I believe that was Jesus because the voice was unlike any other voice that, that I've heard in a conversation. And the person that spoke it was not a visible person. I'm telling you guys this, y'all. The rapture is going to happen. Just be patient. I encourage you to look up and just watch daily. Okay? That is why it's imminent. To watch daily. Okay? When you're watching every single day for Christ, when he, if he doesn't come today, then he's coming tomorrow. If he doesn't come tomorrow, then the next day. Just like that. You see, when you're watching daily, your trust and your whole faith rest on Christ. You are resting you're not over here calculating dates and stuff, trying to figure something. There's nothing to figure out. Just rest in Christ. Keep your focus on Jesus and just wait for his return. That's it. He's coming. Wait with enthusiasm, with excitement, okay? Because guess what? It will be a glorious day when that happens. It will be so glorious beyond what you have... What I've seen so far, I'm telling you guys, you know, I have the most vivid rapture dream that I've had. Like that one, I mean, it honestly is probably like the best one ever, okay? I mean, it was so, oh my goodness, I can't even begin to get into, and yes, I heard the words on that particular rapture dream, come up hither. That's exactly what I heard, and instantly, phew. but that's not the point. Point of this video is to encourage you to know that all your sins are forgiven. His blood atonement on that cross is sufficient enough to pay for all your sins, past, present, and future. All the people that's telling you that no, it is not, they are lying to you. Jesus, his own words, okay? His own words. Matthew 26, 28, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. For the remission of sins. The forgiveness of sins. That's right. How do you obtain this forgiveness? By believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in him. Believe that Jesus is the son of God. And that all he did, he did for you. His death, burial, and resurrection. You will be justified. The moment you put your trust in Jesus Christ. And all your sins forgiven. That's right. We don't look at our sins. We look at Christ. When you start watching your sins, guess what you start doing? You are now looking at yourself. Again, you are putting yourself back under the law. That's really what you're doing. This is so important. Focus on Jesus Christ, okay? You have to come to the end of yourself. Admit that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. And then you focus on the one who can save you, Jesus Christ. And the one who is able to forgive all your sins, past, present, and future, Jesus Christ. This is why we keep repeating this over and over and over. It never gets old. You know why? Because until you get this like literally engraved in your mind, 
It is so easy for people to get swayed left and right by those who are teaching something contrary to the gospel. It's gospel plus something. Uh Uh-uh, run from that. You come to faith by believing alone. You are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Solo fide. Faith plus nothing equals salvation. Okay? People hate to hear that. Guess what I'm about to tell you? The nanosecond you have placed your trust on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified, and justified. That's right. My goodness, people. There are so many people on the edge right now because the enemy is pretty much doing like a nice, you know, moonwalk on many people, you know. He's enjoying himself right now. But you can't let him do that. We have the spirit of Christ in us. Let's exercise the power of Christ and the authority given to us by Jesus Christ and say, no, I stand with Christ and I stand with his promises, not the promises of men. You see, a lot of times these people that are very good, they're very good if you're not careful, because I was on the Lordship, Salvation and Law for the longest, okay? So I have anxiety when it comes to that, and I can stand hearing anything that goes against the gospel. I literally instantly just put a wall up. I can't listen to that because that just infuriates my spirit because I know exactly what it did to me. Okay? It literally almost destroyed my life. I nearly gave up everything because I just couldn't handle it anymore. Because it seemed like the more I tried, the more I failed. Because I was relying on myself. Trying to fix myself. Versus trusting and resting in Christ. There's a difference. The grace of God leads you to trust and rest in Christ. Finish redemptive work. He did the work already. All he says, come on. Come on in. Enter my rest. I did the work for you. Enter my rest. Okay? When you enter God's rest, he is able to use you and do whatever at that point. Okay? You could see somebody today where, you know, you know where God can put it in your heart. Hey, call this person and just talk to them just to see how they're doing. And it could be the phone call that that person just, just hoping to get from somebody that cares about them. And they get it from you. And that changes Whatever situation they're going through at that moment emotionally. You don't know how God uses people. Let us not walk around trying to, you know, walk around with a a microscope. No one has the right to inspect anybody. If you want to inspect, inspect yourself. Didn't Paul say that you should examine yourself whether you're in the faith? Yeah, you examine yourself. Stop examining somebody else. Focus on you. You see, this relationship is between you and God, not me, God, and somebody else. No, no, no. It is an individual relationship, one-on-one, okay? Don't let anyone talk you into looking at yourself in the mirror every single time, checking yourself constantly. You don't do that. When you focus on Christ, everything else falls in place. I promise you that, guys. When you focus, if your focus is on Jesus Christ, everything else will fall in place. Why? Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. And he will. He who began good work in you will finish it. That's right. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, okay? Once you are saved, you are saved. You cannot lose your salvation, okay? Because if you could lose your salvation, then it's no longer a free gift. That means somebody has to call somebody a liar. And I don't want to call God a liar because God doesn't lie. Do you see what I'm saying? So please don't listen to these people. They are lying to you. Anyone that have you doubt your salvation is a liar. Run. Anyway, as always, this is the truth. When all end fails, ask Jesus. All right? Y'all have a wonderful day. Peace.